At the time of writing this video, Splatoon 3 has two King Salmonids. I'm very confident we'll get another at some point. The developers have already implemented a way for players to get random boss salmonids when their sniff meters are full, after all. We've seen it in both regular rotations and in the June 2023 big run. You know, when there wasn't a new King Salmonid. <laughs> I mean, hey. Splatoon 3. Three. Three bosses. At least. Come on! When you visit Grizzco and take a look at all the rewards you can get, there's a section dedicated to locker stickers. Members of the community were very suspicious early on when there were so many stickers that didn't seem to match any salmonids currently in the game. And then, what happened eventually? One of the previously unmatched stickers, codenamed Orbs, suddenly looked very much like Horaboros. So that got people thinking, which other ones could also become a boss salmonid? Probably not the one that looks like grass. <laughs> Enter Whirlpool. Look at the spelling. It's gotta be Whirlpool. I am a Whirlpool believer. This sticker looks too good to waste, and I want to explain to you how this boss can be made. Many of you know the Pokemon wishy-washy, right? This is a Splatoon equivalent of Wishy Washy, a bunch of salmonids swimming in a giant school. Heck, there's even a separate school sticker in the Grizzco Redemption Shop. And no, not 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 Squid School. We do like Squid School though. He's great. <laughs> this isn't recess though. They're here to defend whatever map in question is being played in your rotation. But where are these flying fish already in Salmon Run? Look at the fish stick. We already have flying fish. I, I like to call them the meeps because of the little sounds they make, but I'll call them shooting small fry here for convenience. Both King Salmonids we have so far have a gimmick revolving around a special. Kozuna uses splashdowns, and Horoboros uses booyah bombs. What brand new special have we had added to the game around the time of old Boris? Super chumps, and they're perfect for this. Imagine this swimming school of fish bobbing up and down across the map. Think of the motion of an inkjet here. Occasionally blasting off flying or really falling small fry that you really should destroy. Why? Every small fry that you splat will do a little extra damage to Whirlpool's HP bar. And of course, splatting all of the small fry will mean that none of them get to return to the Greater Whirlpool, weakening its strength significantly and dealing extra damage. Any small fry that aren't splatted will blast back up to the main school, leaving behind a super chump equivalent explosion, dealing up to 70 damage. Leaving the shooting small fry alive, especially on a crowded high tide field, is asking for disaster. Getting hit with the 70 damage blast of a shooting small fry would be pretty terrible if there's a normal small fry hiding under your feet. Seeing a small fry only need three taps to splat in Splatoon 3. That would imply a super chump explosion and a small fry tap would be enough to get a splat on you. The Greater Whirlpool's movement we can make a bit different from Haraboros too. Instead of flying in a circle around the map, I want to see it move across the map in an hourglass type shape, like a school of fish that's constantly circling back and forth to look around. This means there are points in time where the Whirlpool will be directly overhead, giving players a chance to fire at it easily. The shooting small fry will be fired when Whirlpool is at the edges of the map, not at the center. I thought about a really cruel mechanic along the way, where maybe like any small fry you don't splat, not only blow up as they go back up, but they also return HP to the Whirlpool, but that's too mean. It would be funny though. Given the fact that it would be harder to take care of a large number of chumps with less players, I've considered a Tenta missiles like mechanic where when there's only two players on the field, the number of chumps is about 60%. Maybe when you have three players, the number of chumps that are fired is about 80%. This also makes sure that a smaller group can't cheese the fight on a low hazard level by just annihilating chumps over and over again. How does the placement of the shooting small fry get determined? When a player uses super chumps, there's a predetermined radius of how spread apart the chumps can be. The game can do a check to see, using each player as the center of the radius, how many other players are nearby. 
The player with the most nearby teammates is the center of the shooting small fry super chump drop. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> if there are two or more players with an equivalent number of nearby teammates, Whirlpool's AI can just select at random. It could also be fun to have it break ties based on which players are holding a golden egg, since throwing golden eggs at Whirlpool does a lot of damage, just like any other King Salmonid. Let's talk about what weapons would play the best against Whirlpool. Let's allow the small fry to have the same HP each as a generic super jump, with no Salmon Run multiplier. Most Salmon Run opponents take higher damage than normal, but doing this for these super jumps would probably lead to them being one-shot by nearly any weapon in the game. Some weapons like the nozzle noses might not be the best for the chumps, but would work great for the body of the fish because of their high 1v1 damage output. Slatlings, shooters, rapid fire blasters, and rollers would easily be able to take care of the problem, and on top of that would help to clear the field of any piles of ink left behind by the initial landing of the shooting small fry. Weapons like the 96 Gal that can one-shot the chumps would be extremely strong. Whirlpool would help train individuals to have tighter aim and practice good survival techniques when you're not able to get rid of all the shooting small fry. If you can't get those chumps, hopefully your teammates have it handled or hopefully you're just getting out of the way. I hope you'd have your teammates' backs, too. Imagine playing a slower weapon like a Hydra Splatling, and an enemy Salmonid Ink Blast suddenly appears behind you when you're running away from a Steel Eel or a Scrapper, rendering you trapped. Awful. Other goofy things that could go wrong? Imagine your teammates are super spread apart on low tide, and the chumps go flying off to the far end of the map by the shore? No. <laughs> The best part of all this, I can grind for a silver Whirlpool badge and show off all three on my banner and feel really cool about myself. Admittedly, I only have Koazuna at the moment, and we know that Boris has been in the game for a while, but shh. The only issue I can think of with having three or more King Salmonids regularly in rotation is that it'll be pretty hard to get a specific one when that's the one that you're looking for. For someone trying to get all the King Salmonid badges, you only have one or two opportunities a week to see a specific boss. Maybe the development team will let the in-rotation boss be random more often? Maybe. Hear me out. We can update the stat screen in Salmon Run to actually tell us which boss we've defeated instead of just one big number saying how many King Salmonids we've splatted. <laughs> that would be nice. So, what do you think? Would you play against Whirlpool? Would it provide enough challenge and variety for you? I believe this provides a great middle ground between Koozuna and Horoboros, as one of the biggest problems people sometimes have with Boris is that he's too high in the sky for some weapons to easily interact with. Long and short range weapons alike will have something to shoot at. The Whirlpool School of Fish and the Shooting Small Fry. And, and also like, you know, all, all, all the bosses on the ground. You don't want to ignore those. That's a good way to lose. <laughs> Do you have any other specials you'd like to turn into a King Salmonid? Or maybe you have an idea of your own? Let me know in the comments. It's so fun to make ideas. And Nintendo, if you're listening, please take this idea from me if you're not already doing it. Please, please, please. <laughs>